Hey everybody, welcome to another episode here on Bully Whispers, and we are here today to talk about who would come out on top if Tony Soprano and the New Jersey Mob were at war with the Marlowe Stanfield organization. In doing so, we will take a look at how their personalities stack up against each other, the differences in their organizational setups, as well as the advantages and disadvantages that would bring them, the strategies each could utilize to win, and ultimately how it would probably play out in the end, although I would love to hear how you think it would go down in the comments. Before digging in, I'm going to take a second to set some parameters. First, both of them are at the height of their power, so we won't be dealing with either of them at the end of their series with all their best people dead or in jail. No doubt you kind of full clip. For Tony, this would probably be in the middle of the series, seasons 3, 4, and going into season 5. For Marlo, this would be after he connects with the Greek and takes out Prop Joe, and it would have to be after this happened. If he was still just a part of the co-op, there is no way they would have tolerated a war with the Mafia and would have threatened to kick him out just like they did with Stringer Bell. Next, both require a consistent flow of money to operate. While a few genuine loyalties may lie on either side, both crews are held together primarily by money, so any long-term disruption in cash flow would be disastrous for either of them. With this in mind, there is an economic factor which will come into play in addition to the violence and, all the while, both will face internal pressures. In terms of personalities, while Tony may have a far more jovial and socially likable personality, he also has a tendency to get distracted that Marlo doesn't. Marlo is a very focused individual, whereas Tony is easily pulled in other directions, often by a woman. That's because you didn't want it. Too busy chasing skirt. Chasing skirt, your average is 500. However, Tony may have more advantages than Marlo, although they both have some. Tony has the unquestionable advantage when it comes to sources of information such as the FBI, but Marlo has the ability to generate more money at a faster pace due to the nature of the drug business. If this weren't the case, it wouldn't have lured in so many mobsters despite the penalty of death, both in real life and in The Sopranos with Big Pussy. But it's also one of Marlo's biggest weaknesses. Tony and his people have many different streams of income, while Marlo really only has the one, and this is largely due to the differences in the setup of their crews. In the Mafia, people are expected to go out, find their own money, and bring it back to the family. Whereas in the drug business setup, most people are closer to retail cashiers, and even the Barksdales refer to it as being on salary. Even people who are getting points on the package are just turning someone else's product into cash, while Mafia guys are expected to be able to get something from nothing, although most of the prime jobs are gifted in the Mafia as well. This means that in the short term, Marlo will get more loyalty from his people because they need him to make money in a way the mob guys just don't. However, if he loses his source or if a new one becomes available, he would become crippled because his power lies solely on his control of the heroin supply. Without that, he's just another gang leader who controls a few blocks and is certainly no match for the Mafia. It also means that Marlo would have a much easier time replacing lower level people, since they are essentially just armed cashiers, and this makes him relatively immune to a street level war that doesn't hit him directly, but wide open to an economic one. We already know that the Soprano crew is capable of finding a little bit of heroin to help deals go through, and I think it's safe to say given their money and connections to New York and to Europe through Furio, that they would easily be able to find a large scale distributor or importer, possibly even the Greek himself. If Tony was able to introduce a steady supplier to the dealers of Baltimore, they would turn on Marlowe quickly since they had been burned by him before when he essentially disbanded the co-op and raised prices. This singular source of power makes Marlowe more vulnerable from within than Tony, and while the Mafia is certainly treacherous, there is a hierarchy and somewhat political setup that makes it much less likely. For example, if Tony Soprano's crew was a drug dealing crew set up like Marlowe's and Benny Fazio, criminal mastermind, hooked up with the Secret Connect, he could easily kill Tony and slide right into the top spot because supply equals power. This is how Marlowe was able to get to the head of the table at such a young age, whereas Christopher was in his early 30s by the time he was just being made. And that's with him being fast tracked by Tony. It also explains why you don't see anyone at the co-op that is anywhere near as old as Junior or Carmine Sr., and it provides the basis for the biggest problem Marlowe will face, but we'll get back to that in a bit. So what does all of this mean in terms of strategy? First and foremost, it means Marlowe has no chance of beating Tony in a war of economic attrition, so his best bet, by far, is if he's focused enough to see the fight coming before a distracted Tony and is able to hit him at one of his places of business like Satrials or the Bing. If not, Tony will go into hiding and they will both face the same problem, having to hire outside help. 
Although Tony would have to get outside help no matter what, and he knows it. Bunch of white guys setting off caps in the ghetto. That won't attract any attention at all. At this point, time would be Tony's friend. Due to his multiple and evolving streams of income, he is less prone to economic disruption. Although the big ones like construction still need to be tended to by somewhat higher level guys, leaving them open to attack. Unfortunately for Marlo, due to the nature of the Mafia, Tony would have a much easier time replacing middle management types because the Mafia's grooming process is so much longer. In their primes, Tony could handle the loss of one or two of his top guys better than Marlo could handle the loss of Chris or Snoop. That being said, the quality of Marlo's top people is top notch. I don't know how many of Tony's people would willingly take a life sentence for him. Certainly not big pussy. In terms of who would have the advantage in finding the other, Again, time is Tony's friend, but initially, the advantage goes decidedly to Marlo. Due to the nature of the drug game, Marlo already stays relatively hidden, occasionally showing up at the courtyard, as opposed to Tony, who, due to the nature of his position, goes about his life relatively openly until he has a reason otherwise. If an initial hit against Tony is unsuccessful and he goes into hiding, this puts Marlo at a tremendous disadvantage because he can't go away for a very long time. The longer he's away, the more people are likely to find the connect and cut him out, whereas Tony, due to the structure of the mob, can go further away for longer stretches of time with less of a threat internally. Ultimately, this is why I think Tony would come out on top, because Marlo would need a quick resolution to the conflict, and even then, he has no real path to victory. The best he could hope for is a quick stalemate by creating enough turmoil around Tony's shared projects with New York that New York forces Tony to make peace but he would need a lot of info on both New Jersey and New York to even know that was a move he could make, let alone to actually make it. Assuming Marlowe chooses the path of violence, even if his initial hit on Tony is successful, he's going to face an even bigger problem, the Mafia itself. If it were just street-level guys killing street-level guys, that would be one thing, but a boss being killed by a street gang would never be tolerated, and that's the sort of thing that's likely to get the New York families involved. Now, if Marlowe was cartel, that would be a different story, but he isn't. He isn't even the head of a nationwide street gang like the Bloods, Crips, or GDs. He runs a local crew that, although powerful, has no real connections or influence outside of Baltimore. On the other hand, not only is time on Tony's side, but he doesn't even really need to hit Marlowe directly. He just needs to disrupt their street-level business by sending hired crews enough to keep Marlowe occupied, while looking for a new source to introduce to Baltimore, or for the other former members of the co-op to find one. As soon as one of those things happens, the other Baltimore guys will take Marlowe out themselves. If one of Tony's hired crews does manage to get Marlowe, Tony has much less to fear in terms of reprisal. Outside of perhaps Chris and Snoop individually, there is no enduring organization to continue the fight against Tony. That being said, this would be no cakewalk for Tony. First off, he would always be playing away game, so to speak, which would be complicated by the fact that they are being played by hired help. On top of that, Marlo is familiar with the feigned retreat strategy and used it fairly effectively against Avon. Tony's ego would make him very susceptible to this maneuver, but I'm not sure how successful it would be since Tony's people would never be the ones actually going down there. Marlo could possibly get Tony and his guys relaxed enough that he could hit them in New Jersey, but that would probably put him back in the same spot where he would be facing the mob as a whole, and not just New Jersey. Tony, on the other hand, would have multiple paths to victory and essentially would just have to keep from getting shot himself. Before signing off, I'd like to take a second to thank all the viewers. We recently passed 8,000 subs and 1 million views, so thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. As always, thanks for watching this episode here on Bully Whispers. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you at the next score.